Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and today I'm going to play with my stencils. This is the autumn stencil by the new stencil collection from Tim Holtz and I think it's perfect from this season. So I'll be working on this uh, white cardstock and I'm going to tape it uh, temporarily down on my craft mat just to make sure that it's, it's not going to move. And I'm also going to tape down the stencil as well and that's because I will be using my finger dabbers along with the stressings and I will be doing a lot of stenciling over this stencil so I need to make sure that nothing is going to move. So I have picked up some colors uh, from the Distress Ink line and uh, I mainly stayed with um, oranges, uh, reds and uh, I'm going to add a touch of uh, brown and green and I will go ahead and use my finger dabbers. Now I get a lot of questions about my finger dabbers. I really don't have one dabber for each color, but uh, I do have a couple for each color family. So I do have one for dark greens and one for lighter greens and so on. Now I'm going over the stencil with my dabber and I'm mixing directly on my paper both the colors. So for this I went with a green and an orange. And you can see on screen right now the Distress Ink colors that I have used as I was uh, coloring my leaves. As always, you will find the full list of all the supplies that I used today down below in the description area and as well as on my blog. Now I'm going to put on some music as you are watching how I colored all the leaves and I will catch you up once everything is colored. Now at this stage I was happy with how everything was looking and uh, you can leave the stencil as it is for the next technique but I just couldn't leave it there, I wanted to see the result. So this is how it's looking, I think it's really gorgeous as it is and you can just uh, stick the panel on top of a card. But I am going to make sure that this is nice and dry, I am going to cut it down and I am going to show you a really cool technique for creating a background for all those leaves. So I'm kind of working backwards today. I first did my focal points and then I'm going to do the background. For uh, now I'm going to use this rectangle die and cut it down. After running it through my die cutting machine, then again I'm going to place it on my craft mat and uh, make sure that the stencil is directly on top of the leaves. Again I'm going to tape it down just to make sure that this is not going to move. And now I'm going to use my Versamark ink. I'm going to make sure that I apply enough Versamark through the stencil on all the leaves. I am tapping the ink pad again and again on top of everything and I'm going to peel off the stencil and I'm going to try and catch the light on my paper just to make sure that I have a good coverage on all the designs. So now I'm going to apply my embossing powder and I am going to use clear embossing powder. This is by Nouveau and I, uh, although it looks white when I apply it, it's going to melt into totally clear one. 
once I melt the powder, I'm going to have two advantages. The first one is that it's going to give a great texture on my panel because all the leaves are going to be glossy, they're going to shine. And uh, the second one is it's going to turn all the designs into a resist area, which means that whatever I do on top with my distress inks, it's not going to mix with the color of the leaves. I'm using my heat gun to melt the embossing powder and you can see here how it turns totally clear and at the same time it um, makes the colors pop even more and makes everything shiny. I think it's really a beautiful technique. So this is how it's looking right now and again you can stop at this stage and uh, stick it on top of a card but I'm going to take it even further and I'm going to show you how you can color the background. So for the background I'm going to use three different Distress Ink colors that you can see on screen right now. I am going over the leaves with my blending tool. If you want your leaves to be really vibrant against the background and uh, you want everything to look uh, really crisp, then you shouldn't go ahead and add the color on the background. Just leave it white. So you have a big contrast. But uh, in this case, I'm going for a wood grain background, which I'm going to show you how to do that, which is going to turn this uh, panel into a more uh, warm looking, which is perfect for a fall card. So after mixing the two colors, I'm going to go ahead and add my darker one at the edges. Which is going to frame my panel and it's going to bring everything together. Once I'm happy with how my background is looking, I'm going to bring in a clean cloth. I'm going to go over the leaves just to make sure that I remove any excess ink on top of the embossing powder. And now for another great technique, I want to have a wood grain texture at the background, so I'm going to stamp uh, the, oh, the whole thing with a wood grain stamp. This is a stamp set by Tim Holt, it's from his latest release, and uh, whatever has a wood grain on top, I really love it, so I'm trying to decide which one of those I'll be using. I'm going to place it on top of my Misty, close the door, and then I'm going to ink my stamp. Now for my uh, ink, I'm using Distress Ink again, and that's the darkest color that I have used on my panel at the borders. So I'm going to close the flap, and the whole wood cream is going to transfer on my panel. However, don't worry about the transfer on top of the leaves. Just because they have uh, embossing powder on top, they resist the ink, so with my clean cloth I can just go over them and clean them up. And this way you can create a wood grain texture at the background with all the leaves staying in the foreground. Now that the panel is ready, you can just stick it on top of a card base, but I decided to add even more texture. This is a, a burlap with uh, adhesive at the back and it's come, it comes from a collection by Tim Holtz with uh, lots of uh, different textures. I'm going to use my scissors to cut out the excess. And I have basically covered up the front of my card base. I'm using some uh, strong adhesive at the back of my panel and that's just because I want to stick it on top of the burlap. I'm going to peel off uh, the backing and I'm going to stick it on top of my card base. Now this panel is slightly smaller than the standard card, which is going to leave a nice border all around so that you can see the texture from the burlap. Now all that's left to do is to stick the sentiment, for that I'm going with a die cut that says hello and I have cut it out from craft paper. Now this is a very versatile card, you can uh, pretty much stick any, any type of uh, sentiment on top and uh, you can see that it looks beautiful wherever you stick the sentiment. Now this um, also is a great design because it works as a masculine card as well. Just to make sure that everything is uh, stuck down uh, perfectly, I am using uh, glossy accents at the top of my die cut and then I'm going to stick it down. And that was the cards for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of the card I made today.